Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're here again with uh, Kyle Helu, and we're going to be continuing the conversation with the importance of physical health and how it relates to the shakuhachi. And I think that this this is your probably one of your best expertise areas to talk about, especially since you do so much things with uh, karate and you've linked it in with. Um, and of course, I think the most important thing is is the breath. We know we've we've talked about this, and even in our first interview that we did, as well as the last two. Um, topics or last two little segments we did but uh, physical health yeah Uh, physical physical health I believe starts if I may if I may make the link with our first topic that we talked about is in setting a routine and when you set yourself a routine that you're able to engage in and develop that's the first step because you're establishing a sane mind up to a certain extent. And um, um, so once you have that routine established, um, then you definitely want to become a person who is able to work through that routine. So it's something within your own capacity. You don't want to set anything that is beyond your own capacity. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not in a position to push yourself beyond your limits. Yes, that's for sure. You can do that, but you take things one step at a time. And again, remember not to be judgmental, but accept things as they are because that's where they need to be. The importance of balancing our, let's say, studies of, uh, in our case, shakuhachi with a physical activity is, is really really high and it's a topic that I'm still exploring and uh, finding ways to verbalize it but when we're physically active we are allowing for oxygen to be pumped into the blood at much higher rates than than normal and as a result we are able to push our uh, uh, physical threshold of tolerance into higher levels and higher grounds and when you physically, mentally, and uh, uh, take your, your threshold to a higher level, you are setting yourself as a, uh, 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 someone who is in control of the situation. And you're telling yourself, okay, this is me hitting the wall, and this is me going beyond the wall. Um, the more you do that and the more you, you set your threshold for tolerance, and I'm not really going to say pain tolerance, although that could be, um, again, subjective on the ac- activity that you're involved in, but this kind of physical exhaustion allows you to dig deep within yourself, dig deep within your not only physical capacity, but also your mental capacity, um, and you'd be surprised as to what you're going to find there. Mm-hmm. Um, one example comes to mind. In 2001, when I had uh, I had been living at Tokyo University, uh, karate team dormitory, and we would have morning practice. And one of the morning practice exercises was to go through various running drills um, on the football uh, field. And one of those drills you had to carry, kind of like a soldier in battle carrying their buddies on their backs. You had to carry a buddy on your back and run across the field or half of the field, which would have been about, I'd say, I don't know, 40 yards or so. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I didn't have it in me. I, I felt I didn't have it in me. And then all of a sudden I was on one end and on the other end I see that my teacher, our teacher, who had uh, just appeared on the scene, and he looks, and right up from across the field, he tells me, I can do it. Um, he calls me by my middle name, he calls me Kamal. He said, Kamaru, Kambare. Mm-hmm. And that's all he had to say, and it was like, I can still visualize the smile on his face, and that's all he had to say, but something 
somehow deep within me found this gem, if you want to call it, um, that just basically began to shine. And, and that was this inner light, I think, that is present in all of us. But sometimes you need help, somebody to bring it out from you. Uh, sometimes you have no one, but you can find it yourself. And I was able to make it to the starting point and finished. And yes, I was exhausted and all that, but I had pushed myself and that taught me a lesson that no matter how hard things are, I can always find a way to attain and to reach the goal. Yeah. And I, so I that's seen, you know, maybe even another topic, I think we can kind of mix it in with this one is, you know, the importance of a really great teacher because a, a good teacher doesn't hold your hand and another, a good other teacher doesn't push you into the, you know, into the door for you to open it. But the other, the, a great teacher um, inspires you to open the door. Absolutely. And so that's, uh, it's just, yeah, I think that's, I think that's really, really important there uh, to, to kind of go back into the importance of this of physical health and with routine, you, you know, this reminded me of a, another story with a friend of mine who um, is, he's always on a different diet uh, of some sort or always on a different routine of, of doing uh, different exercises or whatever. Um, now the problem with him though, is that he's always on a new diet every single week. And that's with routine. So, you know, one week he'll do one thing and another week he does another thing and he uh, ends up gaining a little bit of weight and he gets more stressed out about it. And I say, well, you can't go from a high carb diet to a high fat diet and then go to a vegetarian diet and then go to an only meat diet. I mean, your body is literally going to like, you know, what the heck is happening? And it, the way to the way that I told him, because he's also a musician, it's like, you know, one week you're deciding that you're going to play violin and the next week you're learning piano. And then a week after that, you're trying to do the kazoo. I mean, it's just, you, you have to have a routine of all these things because otherwise your, your body is trying to learn these instruments. You know, it's trying to digest these foods and learn all these foods, but you're not giving it enough time to adequately, adequately process everything. And uh, this is the same thing with the physical health too too much of one thing uh like too much of of doing let's say let's say you're really avid um for squats too much squats you're not going to be able to walk for a couple of days and it's going to be really really painful you're going to probably tighten yourself up more and you'll probably even do some uh, lower back damage but just the right amount you'll have a good amount of soreness which is usually from the muscles ripping and tearing and then them uh, rebuilding themselves and uh also the lactic acid build up uh, and then you can move on to something else. And so then you can say, okay, I'm going to balance out that part. I'm going to balance out my diet of uh, physical exercise with working on my upper body. And so, but I, I think that when, when we were talking about the, the end of topic two about their physical body uh, reacts to how your mental body is. And when you are really well balanced physically and in diet, your mind is going to feel a lot better. And I think that that's exactly what we need for, for music. That is such a high intensity concentration um, art form. Now, not to say that others are not as you know, intense, you know, art, uh, uh, visual art is just as intense as a, uh, um, you know, sitting there with a paintbrush and easel and canvas for five hours and working on something is just as difficult as practicing for two hours and doing a concert. So, but I, I think that's where I, I kind of sit on that. And I was wondering if you had anything to um, add on that. As I also think that the, um, you know, this, this idea of shortness of breath that we mentioned, I think in the first one, um, the first series, that our first little video we did. And, uh, but that's more of like kind of the physical reactions around us, but we can kind of train that as we're doing physical exercise. Yeah, absolutely. Um always remember to breathe and uh, um, stay focused on your activity. Um, you know, it's, it's mind boggling what, what the human body can, can achieve and can go through. And always we're, we're limiting ourselves by uh, either previous accomplishments or, um, you know, trying to beat a certain particular record of, of uh, somebody else. You know, just, I think, stay focused on what you're doing, your own activity, 
and uh, you know take things one day at a time. You know, I really like this idea of uh, of breathing, and and I was I forgot that I was going to mention this. When we do exercises, when we work out, and in, especially in karate, breathing is so important. You don't want to inhale on the punch. You know, you want to exhale, right? I mean, this is it's, so. It's another sort of training of uh, the the controlled breathing, and yeah. I wonder how much relationship it has with um, with actual shakuhachi playing. I wonder if it helps us focus our breathing more. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> it, basically, when you're exhaling or when you're releasing a technique, now you can, you can release a technique on an exhale, also release a technique on an inhale, but you want to find um, the method, the way of using the least amount of effort in order to release and attain the maximal effect. Hmm. So least amount of effort to attain the maximal effect. And you think, okay, well, expansion is a form of release. Contraction is a form of uh, gathering or, or reaching the state of inertia or the highest level of potential energy that will allow us to, again, release again on the outside. As much as we see our bodies as contracting and expanding in order to release a technique on the outside, on the inside, there is equally as much activity going on, allowing for expansion and contraction of the uh, uh, interior muscles of the body. Uh, when you breathe, if you just take a, a deep breath into your abdomen, you're actually contracting. Uh, on, you're contracting the organs closer to one another. You're expanding in, in one way, but you're also contracting in another way. And so this is a, a, a type of a, um, double, let's say, contraction or double expansion. You're inhaling, something inside of you expands, and then on the other side, on the other hand, something also contracts. The, the organs, they contract, the muscles, they begin to, uh, uh, basically they are uh, shaping themselves and and what happens is when you release your technique using your physical body you're expanding on the outside but releasing on the inside you're contracting on the inside mm, mm, mm. so it's it's um, it's constantly happening and if you learn to time it and you train it and you drill it through both and that's, that's one of the links for me between karate and shakuhachi. Again, verbalizing it is not so easy. It's difficult. But yeah, because that's I such a, it's a feel. It. Yeah, it's a feel. Exactly. You know? And uh, that, I, that's what I, I tell a lot of my students. Like, so, for example, I had the video about uh, muraiki that came out, I think, last week. And uh, how to get that bellowing sound. And uh, I, one, of the, one of the people who watched the video uh, reached out to me and said, you know, I have some questions about this. And they were really looking at it technically. And at the end of our like, little 30-minute session, I said, look, those are, the, those are the technical aspects of, this, of, of how to uh, obtain this technique. You know, we're just all looking at physical things. But in the end, it's going to be a feeling. And you're just going to know how to place everything. Because my mouth is set up a certain way. And so that, what, I'm, what these technical things that I'm using work well for me but our mouth shapes are going to be different. And it could be something as major as I have an overbite and you have an underbite versus, you know, my tongue is longer and your tongue is shorter or something along these lines. And that all that's going to, um, you know, tally up and then it, it's going to end up being half that, okay, these techniques is a good guide point, but I actually, I have to do a little bit more of this thing. And then you develop a feeling. Absolutely. So it, it, it's going to be different for each person. And that's the, uh, the idea of being the explorer. Um, one of the things I wanted to add is that uh, an exhale can, can lead to a multitude of techniques. And then there could be a partial exhale. And then there could be um, an exhale divided into different uh, groups of exhales. And that's how we can uh, attain different uh, uh, levels of techniques and same thing with the shakuhachi you know you can begin to exhale or activate your your abdominal muscles to begin to exhale but then not really get the air out completely and then burst it out all of a sudden um, 
that leads into more desired effects or whatever that we're trying to uh, to attain so yeah it is a, a personal journey of of self-discovery i think and it's going to be different for each person um and it's more of a feel thing than it is a uh, and I, I think that we, I think that actually in our inter, the first interview we did, I talked about that that was one of my favorite and least favorite phrases is I feel it because it says so much, but it said like to, for myself, it says so much to yourself, but it says so little to the other person. Um, but there's, um, I also wanted to talk a little, all right, what you reminded me of, I wanted to expand on is this, uh, when you were saying that when you were, when you were pushing out the air, like when we're exhaling, we're actually, um, releasing the the tension that's in our body and what i find that's really interesting is uh, a lot of my my students you're releasing they, tension but also what happens is as you exhale something is contracting on the inside yes yes correct correct and um that that's exactly what i was about ready to say is because there's my students they they put tension in all the wrong places like they they keep a lot of it in their cheeks and in their throats and they're and they're actually almost stopping the air from coming out and so this yeah. idea of just kind of let your body do what it does best and when we exhale i say just just stay relaxed give yourself a light little tension just a little bit and you'll watch how the sound grows and so when they don't try and what i mean by try i mean like with effort with extra force the sound becomes this boom and the pitch is so much better and all of these things it's it's kind of interesting that how we are trying to fix our, our body that from what it naturally does best we try to kind of fix it and edit it all the time saying like oh it needs to be more i need to be doing this i need, need to be doing that i need to be doing this or and actually it's not even that we say i we say my throat needs to be doing this we kind of it, we push it ourselves because we as we say i couldn't be making that mistake my body makes that mistake yeah yeah remember i think we're always trying to reach this ultimate state of relaxation mm -hmm. and it is from that state of total relaxation where we are hoping that all of our uh, activity is going to spring out of and an activity or a, a, a relaxed body, a relaxed mind is going to lead into a, um, uh, a more sane decision or a more meaningful decision, a more relaxed and and happy decision, I believe. And so through these exercises, we learn to find our relaxation. And the only way to, to find the relaxation is to pinpoint the tension and decide that you're going to relax. Mm. And you can do that when we're actually ex exhaling in the shakuhachi and you're feeling like you're trying to push to get the sound out and then all of a sudden tell yourself, I'm just gonna let the air come out with no tension, forcelessly, and then see what happens. You might get sound, you might not get sound, but then repetition, this becomes your practice, and then that becomes your routine, taking us back into the first topic that we talked about, um, where you, you uh, try to visualize what you're hoping for. And I think this uh, uh, total state of relaxedness that we're trying to execute our actions out of is really a uh, uh, an inner peace type of a, a uh, action that that springs out of our inner being of calmness and compassion and humility absolutely well thank you so much for stopping by and, and hanging out for this time i hope you all enjoyed the uh the the chat and um if you if you're clicked on this this video and you didn't know that there was a topic one and topic two, uh, you can also watch us talk about what is good practice. Um, and then on our second uh, video, we talked about the war within ourselves, maintaining our doubt, our motivation, and uh, how to use them in our best way. And of course, uh, this video. So thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure to go over these things. Sean, thank you very much. And I again commend you on all your efforts and wish you all the best on this uh, pathway. Thank you very much. I need all of that. Everything. Give me more. <laughs> We're always here. I'm always here. If you need me, if you need anything, please don't hesitate. Mm -hmm. And people can also reach out to you. I have all the links in the description below and I will see you guys next week. Thank you very much.